Rick Steves grew up in Edmonds, Washington. He studied at the University of Washington where he received degrees in business administration and European history. Today he employs 80 people at his Europe Through the Back Door headquarters where he produces over 50 guidebooks on European travel, the most popular travel series in America on public television. He also has a weekly long national public radio show and a weekly column syndicated by the Chicago Tribune. Rick is also a great advocate for marijuana. Speaking around the state and country, he's on the normal advisory board. Rick Steves lives and work in his, works in his hometown of Edmonds, Washington. He's one of ours. Give it up to Rick Steves. Give him a warm welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Empest, yeah. Well, I'm a travel writer. And for me, high is a place. It's a great place. It's a place where I can cook well, my speakers sound better. It's a place where conversations slither around like stray cats. Sometimes I want to go to that place, and a lot of people do. And our government says we can't go there. And today, 80,000 Americans who wanted to go to that place and went there are in jail in our country. Now, there are scenarios where I think it's okay for our government to say you can't go there. But there better be a good reason when my government says I can't go somewhere. And when it comes to getting high, I don't think there's a good reason for our government to say no. I believe that the mature, responsible, adult, recreational use of marijuana is a civil liberty. It is a civil liberty. Now, it's a drug. It's a drug and I'm not promoting it. I acknowledge it's not healthy, it can be abused, it can be addictive. It's not for kids, and if you drive intoxicated by anything, they should throw the book at you. Yeah. But that doesn't get in the way from the principle that enjoying marijuana is a civil liberty. That's something we need to communicate to our society. Now our government is waging a war against marijuana, a perpetual, never-ending, losing, expensive, demoralizing to our police force, eroding credibility to our teachers and parents, war on marijuana. It's a war based on lies. It's a war that costs our society billions of dollars every year, and it's a war that messes up hundreds of thousands of American lives every year. This year alone, 800,000 Americans were arrested for enjoying marijuana. They've got a criminal record now. Now, I bring a European perspective to the discussion. I've spent a third of my life hanging out in Europe with people who think marijuana is about exciting as a can of beer, it's just not a big deal. Now when you think about the European approach to drug problems, and they've got drug problems just like we've got drug problems, they measure their drug problems or the success of their policies on drugs, not by how many people do you lock up, but they measure it based on a concept called harm reduction. This is a radical difference between our and their approach to drug abuse and drug problems. In Europe, they want to take the crime out of the equation and consider it a health problem and an education challenge. And my European friends tell me time and time again that a society has to make a choice, tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And then they always needle me with that annoying little comment that, and in your country, the United States of America, you lock up more people than anybody else in the world. Wow. We lock up eight times as many people per capita as Europeans do. Wow. Either we're inherently more criminal, or there's something screwy about our laws. And most of those people in our jails are in there on drug charges. Now what shapes American policy on drugs? Fear. Fear is a huge thing in our society and it's a big part of this war on drugs. Generations of reefer madness propaganda and lies have been designed to make people who have not paid very careful attention to this issue simply afraid of it. There's a lot of Americans who think there's a whole reservoir of people who would just love to ruin their lives with drug abuse if only it was legal. Now in Portugal, they decriminalized, they, they legalized consumption of all drugs 10 years ago, and you know what they learned? More people don't use drugs. It's just no longer a crime. That's a pretty big revelation. A lot of Americans think that marijuana is a gateway drug. A couple of tokes and all of a sudden you're a heroin addict. 
Well, in the Netherlands, it's been 25 years since they've arrested anybody for smoking pot, and they've got a track record. They care about it as much as we do. And they've found that not many more people smoke marijuana, and not any more people are into hard drugs, and their hard drug-taking population is aging. It's a successful thing when you take the crime out of the marijuana. Now, if marijuana is a gateway drug, it's only a gateway drug because it's illegal, because that means there's criminals on the street with a vested interest in getting you into marijuana so you can get into more profitable, more expensive, and more addictive drugs. The only thing gateway about marijuana is its illegality. Now, the United States is out of sync with the world, and we need to wake America up and tell them that there is a harm reduction approach to drug abuse that is more effective and pragmatic than locking people up. Hemfest is a wonderful celebration of cannabis culture, but I'll tell you, we're never gonna legalize things unless you guys mobilize. This is a great party, it's a lot of fun, but you gotta go out there and make it not scary, and you gotta get the truth through to people in the suburbs who are scared to death about this. All right. It's not scary. Now, we need to support advocacy groups with our money so they can wage our battle for us. I'm a board member of Normal. There's a lot of good groups. For 10 years I've been a board member of Norman, and I'll tell you, those advocacy groups that are fighting against the drug war, our drug war in our country, are not charities, they're services, and they're fighting your battle, and they're waging a courageous and dogged struggle in our state house and in our national government. We need to support them. We're at a crossroads right now in our society, just like we were in the 1930s when we were taking down the, the laws against alcohol. And courageous people are starting to speak out now, and it's an exciting opportunity. Mayor LaGuardia of New York in the 1930s said that if a society has a law on the books that it does not intend to enforce consistently across the board, the very existence of that law corrodes law enforcement and respect of the law in general in a society. That's a serious problem. We've got that today. There's no intentions of enforcing our marijuana laws. They're not going to lock up all of us. If they did that, tomorrow Seattle would be a much less interesting city. I'm a hard-working, kid-raising, church-going, tax-paying citizen of the United States of America, and if I work all day and want to go home and enjoy a joint, that's my civil liberty. This is not hard on drugs, it's not soft on drugs, I'm just trying to inject a little bit of European common sense and pragmatism. We need to see drugs as a health problem, not a criminal issue. And then we can move beyond hard on drugs and soft on drugs. We can be smart on drugs, all right? Thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. Have fun and happy travels, even if you're just staying home, okay? Have fun.